morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Fairview Methodist Church. We're so glad each of you are here. We have uh, some visitors I can see, and we have some of our old folks here. I know some probably are, I'll be old folks, I mean, already. Uh, we have some uh, folks out today I know that are uh, for decorations in different parts of the country. And I believe there's going to be one uh, this afternoon here at 2 o'clock. Okay. Do we have uh, any other announcements? Oh, yes. Yeah. Our, our 
But when you're here, Lord, all the power in the world can, can come from this place. You are the supreme God. You are our creator, the one who maintains us and saves us. You are the uh, Lord of our heaven. Lord, I just thank you that, uh, that there's a man in heaven today, uh, Jim Day, who I had a chance to know. And Lord, he was just a great, great, a friendly, big old man. And he's going to be missed. I know his daughter and his son, they were, they were, he was still their best friend, I think. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray that everything that's said and done in uh, this service today, every, every verse that's sung, every word that's spoken, will bring joy to your heart. For we ask you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Stand and sing. <laughs>
this morning with this song on my heart. I asked for him if they thought they could pull it off. And the main part of it is, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. And here I am to proclaim that he is my God. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. 
tonight, we've been doing a, a thing with songs. About whether songs have a message in it. And if so, what does it mean? As we were singing this, the girls sang this four, five, six times. I don't know how many times they sing this. Michael's learned just to leave it alone and get through. Where was this person at? Was it a man or a woman? Where were they at? Could you say this was, that they were in touch with God? Look at this. Spirit lead me. Where were they? How long had they been saved? Three months? Twenty years? How good a Christian were they? Remember last week about being 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 percent? How good a Christian were they? Where's the starting point? Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet can ever wander and my faith will be made strong in the presence of my Savior. What do you think? 90%? Maybe 10. You see 10% up there? Somebody just wanting to grow. Wanting to go deeper than they ever could by themselves. And always in the presence. Make my faith, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. You go, if that don't crank the tractor. <laughs> I love and hate that song at the same time because it makes me cry every time because it challenges me to grow and that's something we don't like to do. I don't like to do. I like to sit down and just be still and wait on God. Hmm. Take us to our scriptures for a while. If you weren't here last week, we're going to finish up a little bit. Last week we preached about Paul's letter to Timothy. And he told Timothy, the same spirit that I saw in your grandmother, and the same spirit I saw in the mother, your mother, he said, the same spirit I see in you. He said that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he gave us the spirit of power. And the thing that God asked me is, instead of looking, or showed me, instead of looking at where we fall down, because Paul said we've all sinned and come short of the glory, every one of us, Instead of looking at our what we're missing, but yet concentrate on what we've got. Where we are with Christ. And with Paul's confession, Paul confessed. He said, I'm not worthy. And he was telling Timothy, neither of you. But yet God has called us into this. Now this morning, we're going to begin Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. And these are the prophet and the unprofitable servants. I didn't put all of it up here. We'll kind of explain it, but you know it. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is. Now this is different than most parables. There's a word missing from this. Most parables says, for the kingdom of heaven is like this. Jesus said, for the kingdom of heaven is. As a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Now I want to look at this before we get started. As Jesus coming down from heaven, he went into a far country and he called his own servants. That if you are born again this morning, a child of the king, you are God's servants. Can we just accept that? He called his own. And this is what he done to them. He said, and he delivered unto them his goods. So if you are a child of the king this morning, that in the process that God has come unto you, and he's given unto you what he has, and it's not the spirit of fear, it's not the spirit of condemnation. It's not the, the begrudgery of getting up in the morning. And it's not the sadness of, of, 
comes for uh, uh, uplifting this morning. It comes for praise. It comes for glory. It comes from all these things that Jesus does. He said, I'm giving this to my servants. And if you are a child of the King this morning, He's already given you this. Don't listen to her. Listen to me. She'll preach in a minute. Go on to the next scripture. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man, to every person, according to his several ability, and straightway they took his journey. He took his journey. So to each one of you, to your own ability, he didn't put more on you what you could handle. He said to your own ability, he gave unto you. He gave unto his service. So the one that he knew that was able to do more, he gave more, but he expected more. To the one that knew, he knew that he couldn't do as much or she couldn't do as much. He didn't give as much, but he expected as much from them as he gave. And the one that had very little talent, I'm talking about very little talent. He gave for them one talent. But he knew what he gave, he expected to get back with more of it. And then he which had received the one talent, this is given a bunch of scripture, the one that gave five, when the master come back, he asked him, what have you done? He said, Lord, you give me five. He said, I'll give you five more back. And five to go with him. To the one that he gave to, he said, what have you done? He said, I'll give you your two back. And these are the two that I increased. And here's two more. And to the one that he gave one, he said, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strong. And I was afraid. And I went and I hid thy talent, thy talent in the earth. And there thou hast that, that is not thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I, I sowed not, and gathered where I had not strong. Thou oughtest therefore to gain my money to the exchangers, and then at the coming I should be received mine on with usher interest. From to every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but him or him that hath not <coughs> shall be taken away even that which he hath. A profitable servant. Yesterday we went to the funeral of a lady that we've known for 20 years. Practically deaf. You had to scream at her if you wanted her to hear, and I'm not sure she could hear you then. I think she read lips more than she done anything. As we passed by her coffin and saw this beautiful lady there, I think her and her husband had been married for 40, 43 years, 53. 53 years, and they dated for three years before they got married. Her husband's devastated. But as I listened to the preachers preach, I never remember hearing her testify. I never remember hearing her shout. I don't even remember her coming to the altar. I just don't. She was a very quiet person. But one thing I do remember her doing is her and her husband would grow a garden every year. And they would slave over that garden and they would can all summer long. You think, well, Brother Mark, that's what I do. Wait a minute. Our church was not like this one. We had around 150 people every Sunday, a little bigger maybe. And every year, in the springtime and in the fall time, she would invite the whole church to her house. And she would feed them. She would tell the women, don't bring anything. It won't be on the table. Think about this. 
those ladies. Think about bringing 150 people to your home. Think about you cooking all day, all night, getting up, going to church, setting out tables across the yard or wherever she had to put them. And you had corn, you had okra, you had anything you could imagine. She'd cook a ham, she'd do a Boston bun, she'd do four or five different kinds of meat, and there was vegetables from wall to wall. She'd have five or six different kinds of homemade ice cream and all kinds of cakes and pies. She wasn't an evangelist. She wasn't a preacher. She wasn't somebody that you would see that would make a big noise in the church. But what she also did is she also had a son that she adopted. Well, she not only raised him, but she ended up raising two other kids. The white girl that she married, it wasn't his kids. She raised them too. Anybody that come by that didn't have a home to go to, a people to love them, she loved them. And she loved them with everything she had. My father-in-law was in construction at the time and they went and added a room on. Her house wasn't quite big enough for everybody to be comfortable, so they built the room onto their house. Imagine building a room onto your house so that 150 people would be more comfortable in your house. My kids would build a bathroom. That's what, probably what we need. But 150 people come into your house and they said that every morning when they got there at 6 o'clock, the table was spread with breakfast. Said they would eat till they were full. And said that by the time they got good and started by work, working, said at 10.30 they should already be telling them lunch is on the table. Now this wasn't a freebie. She was paying to have this work done. But she was fixing them a seven-course meal for breakfast, for lunch, and for supper every day to do it. He said, saddest day of his life was when they finished the job. <laughs> he accused the other guy of making a two-week job into a six-month job. He said, well, we wasn't getting paid by the hour. Every morning, breakfast, every morning, lunch, every evening, supper, three times a day, and I thought to myself this morning, and God had already given me this message, but this is an add-in, that we learned last week that Paul was telling Timothy, it's not according to your righteousness that you're able to do things for God. It's according to the talents that God has given you that you are according to do things. That my friend, I want you to know that if you stop and think about it, you can use this as a condemnation message. I'm sorry, Rastor, you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Or you can use this as God had given it to me this morning that God has blessed you and given you what He has for you to take that and use that to minister unto people that they may glorify God in whatever state you're doing. And my friend, I want you to know that the devil has lied to all of us the same thing we talked about last week because nobody in here is worthy to do ministry for God. Nobody is good enough to do ministry for God. And the only ones that can do it are the ones that are 100 like Jesus Christ is a bunch of hogwash this morning that if you ain't nothing but 10% and God gives you the talent that he's given you to use it to glorify his name this morning you don't have to be perfect hallelujah he said I've given you this and the one that got five I wish I could do five Hey, some of you can preach better than I can. Some of you do carpentry work. Some of you are lawyers and this and that. The other you help people along the way. I'm just ignorant. All I can do is preach. Pastor said, Lord, we've been sitting there for three and a half hours. You talking. Well, guess what? That's my talent. And I try to use it when I can. Zaya come down there and stick his hand. He said, I got one question. Just bury it over. I got one question. Uh, what time were they? All right, thank you very much. And then shut the door, and I'll still be talking to him. And then run out the door. Well, guess what? This is the talent that God has given me that I know his spirit, I know his voice. And honey, I'm not ashamed to get up and talk about it this morning. That my friend, that whatever gift God has given you, use it to glorify him. Because not only is he going to come back and ask you and receive you as being lost or saved, but honey, he's going to ask you the question, what did you do with what I gave? 
love on you. How many of you this morning have a testimony about what God has done for you in your life or what God has done for a family member or what God has doing or is doing or what God is going to do? This morning, church, God has given us a talent. You say, well, Brother Mark, my talent is love. No, that's not talent. God has given us, every one of us, the ability to love. God has given us all the ability to forgive. But the problem is this morning, I heard a story last week, and I can't get into it, but it was about a person going to church, and the church just judged them, embarrassed them, and made them, forced them pretty much to leave because it wasn't good enough. I sat there and I said, oh my God. Church this morning, God has called you. God has equipped you. And if you're wanting to wait till you become worthy enough to speak his name, you might be the servant with one gift. And the Bible said, I'm going to take that one gift. He said, take it away from him. Give it to the one that had five gifts and used them. He said, Lord, what did you do with it? He said, I went and hid it. Why? Because I was afraid. You don't think Jesus was afraid when they strapped him to that stump and went to beat him with a cat of nine tails? You don't think Jesus was afraid in the garden of Gethsemane when he prayed, God, let this call pass from me. You don't think Jesus was afraid when they strapped that cross across his back and he drug it through town, falling here and there? And when the people that he healed and the people that he loved and the people that he had reached out and touched were screaming, crucify him, spitting on him, throwing rocks at him. But he said, not my will, but I will be God. The church, if you follow the will of fear, and you follow the, the spirit of fear, Satan will lock you up in chains. You will never be worthy to even speak his name. You'll be defeated in your prayer life. You'll be defeated in your church life. You'll be defeated in your singing. You'll be defeated in your preaching. And you'll be defeated in doing the what God has given you to do with. But I want you to know something. If you will rise up in the spirit of power, like he told Timothy, he said that you could tread upon serpents this morning. That praise God, he will give you the power
said, Brother Mark, it ain't how old I am. He said, God's given me something. And until he shuts my mouth, he said, as long as the phone still rings, he said, I'm still going to go. This morning, Paul told Timothy, he said, God has not given you the spirit of fear. And God can't wait till you get perfect. But I want you to know this morning that there's a people hurting. That there's a people that are hungry. That there's a people that need hugs. There's people that need healing. There's people in here this morning that I don't doubt in my mind. Y'all gonna think I'm crazy. But God has given them the gift of healing. But you know where they are? I don't want to pray for nobody. I don't want to offend them. What if they don't believe in it? Oh, they'll throw me out of church and out of somebody. I got news for you. God's going to ask you how many you healed. How many you reached out? How many you touched and healed? He asked the one. He said, what would you do with the talent of you? He said, I went and I buried it. Guys, I want you to know something. I can't name all the talents. But if you are a child of the king this morning, God has given you something beautiful. And he expects for you to multiply it. He expects for you to glorify God in it. And he expects for you to grow in it. I'm not the preacher I was 17 years ago. And I hope, pray, 10 years from now, I won't be the preacher that I am today. He takes us to take our talent and grow it this morning. So, I guess my question is are you a profitable servant? Don't you love to hire people that you know ain't going to do anything? Put me on that list. Back when Daddy was drinking and had all his party buddies, there was two of them. One was a foreman and one was like a lead man in Gulf State Steel in a tower. And they would drink all day and half the night. And then me, when I was 14, didn't even have driver's license. I would drive them to the steel plant. The guard knew me and they would let me in. I would take them into the steel plant. I knew where their bed was. I would lead them to their bed and I would put them to bed and pull the covers up on them. And they work double shifts. Where's Gus stay still at? Closed. It's a bunch of barren concrete. Nobody works there anymore. Where is the church? How many of them do we pass by that are barren? That on the verge of closing or closed? It's because we come sometimes just to receive a blessing and to go our way. God didn't call us to receive a blessing. He called us to do the work. And to take out our work. Let me ask you one more question. I'm going to try, I'm going to, try to hush. I used to think in my ignorance that what I've done at church was enough. How many of you work a job outside of your home or did? How many of you work outside of your home? So when you got home, you did nothing. So you had to work inside your house. And then you had to leave your house, go out into the world and work too. Does God expect any more? He expects us to come into the house of the Lord and to raise up holy hands in the sanctuary and to be a blessing here. But he said, but when we leave here, he said, I want you to go out into the highways, into the highways. And he said, I want you to give them what I've given you. That is peace, love, joy, contentment, hope. Long suffering and meekness. He said, I've given that to you to give it to the world. And I got news for you. You're tired of hearing it. But if you're a child of God, you are qualified to give that gift away. The church is waiting on perfection, and the world's going to hell while we're doing it. God's given you talents, God's given you gifts. God's given you things that I can only dream of. 
I wish, I'm a little bit of I wish I had all of them. And we wouldn't need y'all. <laughs> but here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to proclaim that he's my God. And my talent that God has given me, I love every minute of it. But when I first started, I'm scared of death. Get over your fear. He said, I'm oh, I'm with you always. Stand your feet. You know, I found out a long time ago in my growing process, my sin really wasn't what I did. It's what I didn't do. And one sin is sin, guys. It wasn't I was out cussing and running around with women and drinking and hooping and hollering. It wasn't that. It was the fact that God gave me something to give this one or that one, and now this is kind of turn and walk away. Something beautiful. What is your talent? What are you doing with it? And how can God be glorified by you giving it away? Yes, you. Churches are dying all over the world right now because they're trying to hire the perfect pastor that can do it all. And I got news for you. The pastors may be the, are the least among you. You are the body of Christ. You are it. What is your talent? Give it away. I mean, let's sing.
have you been in your life? Don't answer. Where have you been? Don't you think God allows you to walk down that path for a reason? I've got men that show me how to garden. So, Brother Mark, that's not no great deep spiritual thing. It is if you don't know how to garden. I've got men that's tried to show me how to fish. I've got men that's tried to show me how to hunt. Are we hungry? Well, no. But it's something I wanted to experience. And the only way I can, you know how stupid you feel walking out in the woods laying up against a tree going? <laughs> there is a technique to it. There is a way that you do it. And I learned everything about it. I just forgot it in five minutes. But anyway, Guys, you've been places, and God wants to use those places because there's other people in those places. And it can either be a shame to you, or it may be one of the greatest talents God ever gave you. You may be sick. At this time, I ask Miss Karen if she will come forward. She has something she wants to share with us. Crowd. I'm so blessed to have all of you. Some of you may not know Walt and I. We are the snowbirds that we spent six months here. And God has blessed us that we can spend six months in Florida. We have a fellowship down there, but we so miss the fellowship here. But I knew when we called for prayer, that you would all be faithful in praying for me. I stand here today a miracle. I was at death's door, but let me first explain how God can work. In my prayer time, I had prayed whatever it took for my loved ones for God to get their attention to save their souls whatever it took and I said including my death to get their attention and lo and behold he took me on a road and that road was near death in what we thought was a heart condition, which I've had for years. Everything was pointing, everything was testing to why I was going downhill. I got to the point in an emergency situation where I was bleeding, and they couldn't stop the bleeding. Now I understand through the nurses that your body holds seven pints of blood. By the time they got done, I had 13 pints of blood. I had 10 units of platelets, and I had four units of plasma. It was going in as fast, going out as fast as they were putting it in. It even got to the point that they were taking the blood and put a sleeve on it and start squeezing it faster so that it would go in faster than what it was coming out. A little nurse that I had got to share the word with earlier in the morning came to me and put her arms around me and said, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. But you see, I still didn't know whether I was going to die because I had asked God for my loved ones. But she prayed and she prayed in the spirit and she hugged me while the others were trying to save me. I had a peace. I just, I was scared because I didn't understand what was going on. 
Put your prayers and the prayers of others and the prayers from even South Africa for me. Save me. God heals. I am a miracle. I should not be here. But what God showed me and what I believe he took me through was I, was I at my word. Did I really mean what I had prayed for? And if there is somebody in here that has the talent for healing, pray about it. Just ask the Holy Spirit to give you courage to reach out because there are so many that need to be healed. Not only physically, like I was, but also spiritually. And the gift of healing can come in both directions. Yes. But I want to thank you for your prayers, for your love, and for your devotion. And like I said, praise God, I am a miracle. Amen. Shake hands, tell one another you love them, consider yourself.